What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining us. In this episode, we're going to be looking at the fuel system. That's how I put it together and how it's all going to work. Why am I at the back of the car? Well, this is where it all starts. I'm Jacques from SSBB Builds. I've been racing front wheel drive for over eight years. I won a championship, came runner up and two others. I'm building this BMW to find out what it's like to be involved with rear wheel drive cars and the classic BMW heritage. Join me on this discovery as I share my passion. While I'm waiting for the block and the sub assembly to come back from machining, I'm gonna run through all the different systems I've set up in this car and explain why I did what I did. It's very easy to throw a lot of money at these builds and achieve the same results. So for me, a lot of it was uh, budget driven. So let's get into it. All right, so we're starting here at the back at, by the fuel tank. In the South African models, and I'm pretty sure most of the models of the E36, you have two different sides of the fuel tank. The fuel tank split into two partitions because of the drive shaft that goes from the gearbox to the differential. So the fuel tank has a notch in it. So therefore fuel is either gonna be on one side or the other side of the fuel tank. In the stock, in stock form, there is a balance kind of pipe that uh, bridges the two. You, on the right hand side of the vehicle, you have uh, the fuel pump. And on the left hand side, side, you have a scavenge section. I think it has a, a fuel level sender as well. What I've done, I've taken out the left-hand side scavenge section, removed the balance pipe, and I've installed another pump. Now this pump I got from our local suppliers. The reason for two pumps is pretty obvious. If you're going around a corner and fuel is only on the one side of the tank, and you don't have a, a second pump on that side and just the balance pipe, you will pick up fuel surge. It means that if you go around a corner, there's no fuel, the pump is sucking, it sucks air, it's going to push air to the injectors and the car will misfire. I installed a second pump on the left hand side of the car as well as the first pump. So a, a lot of what people do in track day scenarios and, and also racing scenarios is that they use these two pumps and they use a T-piece and feed that line to the injector rail. Then the return line, they also uh, they, they feed it back into the pump. This is fine. And it does work but it is possible especially in high load long cornering scenarios you can still pick up fuel surge depending on the grip depending on the G's the duration etc and the level of fuel in the tank so I didn't want to take the chance after speaking to ex experts they just also confirmed that it's better to run uh, a fuel surge system on top of the two pumps so that's what I have I have a lift pump on the left hand side as well as the original pump on the right hand side and these pumps are going to feed to what we got going on in the back so something you might be saying to yourself is good god Jacques these fuel lines are a bloody mess well they are a freaking mess we set it up like this to get the car running to get to the dyno for the nine hour I am still going to clean it up there's lots of different options with fuel lines and you can it's very easy to get carried away throw thousands at it to try and solve the problem. Um, there's a few things in terms of safety I'm gonna have to do to make it legal uh, so that we can enter, enter races, but I'll talk about that at the end of the video. If you wanna see some more of this kind of content, please consider subscribing. Just click on the subscribe button, hit the bell, and you're good to go. Let me get my bench. All right, so now we move to the back of the car where I have the fuel surge system installed. On the left, we have the fuel surge tank. This is a 1.5 liter fuel tank. What happens is the pump from the left hand side and the right hand side of the actual inboard fuel tank pumps fuel via these two lines into, into the fuel surge tank to fill it up. It then has a return at the top so that if it is full, the fuel returns back into the fuel tank. So the return line coming from the top of the surge tank comes to this T-piece that I have installed here. Now this T-piece branches off, one line goes into the tank, a return into the tank, so that's this pump that I bought. This side is a return from the injector rail, 
So the after the fuel pressure regulator, the line comes in here. So both of these return into the tank. You might think, okay, well, what stops the fuel going back from the return line from the engine back into the surge tank? It can't because there's a positive uh, fuel pressure coming from that side. So there's fuel pressure, fuel pressure, zero pressure. So both of these lines will basically go in here. The size of this is different. This is eight, that's six. We've made it work. That's kind of how it's going to run. Then at the bottom, we have a high pressure fuel pump. This high pressure fuel pump comes from a VW Caravelle and it supplies plus minus five bars of pressure. It's, we don't need a super high flow fuel pump because again, this thing is not turbo. It's, we're not revving it to the moon. It's about reliability and um, this should give us plenty of fuel. You can go for the Bosch 044 or some sort of AEM application or a high flow fuel pump, but in this case, it's not necessary. You'll also see that the pump, the base and the fuel um, surge tank are all mounted on rubbers so that um, the uh, high, high frequency vibrations don't crack the aluminium. That's very common in race cars where you use aluminium mountings, brackets, etc. It's very common for the fittings and the welds and that to crack due to the high frequencies that run through the chassis. So I've mounted it on rubbers and then the uh, high pressure fuel pump pumps fuel from here to the steel supply line, the original supply line that runs under the chassis to the fuel injectors and the injector rail. But what this allows us to do is that in very high load corners, you will never actually run into any fuel surge because the surge tank will always be full of fuel. And uh, we have two pumps feeding it, so it's just never gonna run low on fuel, unless there's no fuel in the tank. It runs out of fuel then obviously you will have fuel surge. As we move to the front of the car, looking at these lines of this beautiful BMW, look at that girl standing over there, just waiting to be unleashed. Oh, what a beauty. Look at it. What a beauty. What a machine. We need to drive it again. Don't look at that. That's future. Sneak peek. So space limited. Oops much <laughs> all right so the fuel from the surge tank and the high pressure fuel pump comes through the standard steel supply line which is the bottom one goes up into this uh, fuel pressure manifold that I manufactured the reason I did this was so that we could have a pressure sensor for the ECU we use that so that we can build in protection just in case there's a fuel pressure drop the car doesn't run lean. Obviously, it's not a turbo car, so you know that it would be very critical on a turbo car, but uh, it still is critical depending on how we run the timing, etc. So, the nice thing about this Bosch sensor is that it is a fuel pressure and temperature sensor, so we can monitor fuel temperature. And with the systems I have, we log everything that goes into the ECU. So. That's really nice. You can do that with a fuel pressure regulator, but we're using the stock regulator on the fuel rail. Fuel goes in, into the manifold, the sensor senses it, and then kind of follows the route out into the injectors. After the fuel rail, fuel will go back into this line and then back down into the, uh, the standard return line in the fuel tank. All right, so here we have the M50 manifold. So in previous episodes I've explained why we've moved from the stock 328 to the M50 manifold. Long story short, this has bigger runners, makes more power. We've modified the fuel rail so that uh, it can fit onto the M50 manifold. Um, so as I mentioned before, fuel line from the high pressure fuel supply and the surge tank comes into the top of the rail, then runs through and pressurizes the entire rail. Um, this is all stock BMW stuff. We then use the, the stock BMW injectors and um, I've checked with a lot of the guys. They reckon that these injectors should be fine for the power we're gonna be making on this car. Again, we'll have to check that on the dyno if we get into 100% duty cycle and uh, it's running lean, then we know um, something is up. We're using the standard return system. So as I just showed you, the pipe that goes back 
is connected to this this line here and uh, we use the stock fuel pressure regulator the fuel pressure we checked when we were running was around five bar it's plenty it should be really really good and so that is basically the system that we're using all right so that brings us back to this lovely mess we have here this organized chaos the race series and the regulations that we have here pretty much everywhere is that you're not allowed to run fuel lines through the cabin some series allow it in certain scenarios and but most don't so I looked at running the fuel lines underneath the car and possible routing for that it was just gonna be a massive challenge the other option we have is a remote tank with separate lines and then you run them under the chassis I didn't want to go that route because a cost b this i want to retain the size of the original tank for endurance racing the tank is nicely situated for weight distribution it's also plastic it, it has a lot of benefits um, so i wanted to retain the original fuel tank if you want to run fuel lines through the car the rules dictate that you have to have the lines covered and protected so what that means is that I'm going to have to build a cover and a routing shell for the fuel lines. So I haven't gotten to that. It is in the process. I'm going to get my fabricator, RSI fabrication, um, to help me with that uh, because it's a very complex structure. We're going to build it out of aluminium. You can use something like pipe and uh, run PVC. Well, I wouldn't run PVC, but you could run a basically a piping system um, but either way I've seen carbon fiber it's quite common to run a carbon fiber setup in the polos we a lot of the polos we did that but uh, this is not a polo and there isn't a standard off-the-shelf thing that you can buy so we're going to manufacture something it's going to be complex we also want to make it visually appealing so it, it doesn't look like a dog's breakfast the way it currently does so that's what we need to do it is it's something that's going to take a bit of time to get right and i'm going to put a bit of effort into it so for the event that this car is going to at the end of may um, i think what i'll do is we will not run we'll not have the surge tank in just because of time it's possible if we can get it done by then if not then what i will do is i'll put a t in and we'll just run the the two pumps to the to the tank and then clean it all up so that's that all right so that's going to be a wrap for this episode thank you so much for watching and i hope it was insightful i hope you can use some of this information with your build uh, this surge tank i got off of uh, take a lot which is one of our online stores you can get it off i'm sure if you do a search on ebay for a standard 1.5 liter surge tank you can find it the plates i made myself and yeah, the fuel pump, uh, it's pretty much the fuel pump. So you do need a fuel pump retainer, like a holder for that, which is uh, what I've got there. Um, and yeah, hopefully you can, uh, you can do this yourself or this video helps you in some way. If you like this, please consider subscribing. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you in the next one where we're going to go into another system on the car. I'm still deciding which one it'll be, but uh, let's see. Thanks for joining us. We'll catch you next time. Ciao.